Hey you guys, hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing this Saturday? I was about to say Sunday, this Saturday evening. I hope y'all are having a great day. As y'all can see, I wore a Marvel shirt because I sung um, Shang-Chi, um, the Marvel movie, Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings. Good movie, good, good movie. I have to say, I've seen Black Widow and I've seen this one. I think this movie is better than Black Widow. There it is. But um, very, very good movie. I'm turning into a Marvel movie fanatic. Like every Marvel movie since Black Panther I have seen. I have seen. But it was a good movie. But um, I hope y'all are having an amazing, amazing Saturday evening, like I said. So today's Saturday, and that means it is time for Love After Lockup review. So, life after lockup okay so this is season three episode 46 love at second inmate so we're gonna go i okay so i seen a little bit of it yesterday but then the internet went out so <laughs> xfinity internet <laughs> trash but i couldn't watch the rest of the episode so i had to watch it again today so i just got done watching it today but um we're going to work our way up. We're going to talk about the couples that didn't have that much this episode. And then to the one that just completely just blows me out of the water every time. So we're going to start with Brittany and Marcelino. So basically, it's like the beginning of the episode. Beginning of the episode, Brittany meets up with her friend, um, Canis. She is um, one of her partners in this you know substance abuse facility um treatment program her and a couple of other people robert okay y'all remember last week's episode robert took eighty thousand dollars that was in that account for them he took the money and he's nowhere to be found so they meet up with a detective at a diner Brittany was like you know what i don't really trust cops and you know, they always look down on people like us as ex-felons and everything like that. And how, you know, close people to me, I don't really have that many friends. But, you know, in my circle are, you know, ex-felons, people that, I've, that I've went to jail, you know, drug addicts. Those are people that, you know, I know. And I'm like, girl, you need to learn how to expand your circle, okay? Stop. So, they meet up with a detective. And... They tell him everything about what happened. I'm sorry, y'all, but like the middle part, like this part is annoying me. So they tell him everything that um happened. Talking about how, you know, hey, we are doing this X, Y, and Z. And Brittany says that, you know, my husband and I, we invested $8,000 into this program. And they're talking about how, you know, people always look down on, you know, ex-felons and it's like how they turn their nose up against us and we're trying to do something good and how like you know Robert you know said that he worked for the government he worked for you know the Pentagon and the no detective was like you know he could could have been like straight up lying to you did he show you any government ID did he show you a Pentagon ID you know I could have said it straight to you guys you might not know if I was lying and so they're looking dumbfounded and it's like, no way, no way, no way. And he asked them like, did you guys have a contract? No, we didn't have a contract. We didn't do that. Okay. Did you guys have a verbal agreement? Yes, we did have a verbal agreement. So he was like, okay, so this is what's going to happen. You guys are going to file a police report and then what goes on from there a detective is going to get a hold of it and we don't know how long it's going to take but it's better to start you know filing the police report right now so they write down you know um the people who have invested in you know their company and you know what they're going to do they're going to send out letters saying that hey you guys need to file a police report and everything like that to get your money back and stuff like that because they don't know where robert is robert is mia they're not answering his calls Nothing. He probably using that money to get high because he's a former drug addict. So you might not know. So Brittany and Candace leaves. And she asks, you know, Candace asked Brittany, have you told Marcelino about it? Brittany was like, no, I haven't told Marcelino about it until I got all of the facts. And it's like, now I have all of the facts. I have to tell Marcelino. 
Brittany, you better tread lightly because Marcelino is going to throw a fit. He is going to lose his mind because y'all have always had, you know, financial issues with him, you know, being a poker player and gambling, you know, y'all money. So it's like y'all have always had financial issues. So this takes the cake right now. Y'all lost $8,000 on this investment. Marcelino's gonna lose it. So that was Brittany and Marcelino. Now let's get into Brittany and Ray. Um, Brittany and Ray, they meet up with Ray's parents his at his aunt's house. And, you know, his mom and dad are there. I think his cousins and everything like that, his aunt and uncles. So they're happy that Ray's out, of course, you know, understandable. And... He tells them that I got a job. So Ray got a job, okay? He got a J-O-B, okay? He works at a warehouse, $15 or six days a week. Congratulations, you know, Ray. He said he wanted to get a job. That was the first thing he wanted. He's always gotten jobs since he was, you know, young. So he finally got a job at a warehouse. Good job. So this is where I got, you know, a little bit of issue with this, you know. Um... He says, you know, I'm going to have to pay off, you know, start paying off, you know, some bills and debts and everything like that. And so the mama, his mama, his stepmama, I should say, Demetria, she was like, you know, how much is, you know, your restitution? A hundred and forty three thousand dollars. One four three thousand dollars. That is his restitution fee. Brittany said this, you know. I, you know, Ray and I talked about this. We talked about if, you know, we get married, say yesterday, will I have to take on that debt? His uncle said, you know what? In my opinion, yes, because you know what? Y'all are married. What's his is yours and, you know, his is yours and everything like that. Y'all become one. You have to take on that, you know, responsibility as his wife. You know, you're there with him through thick and thin. No, pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. <sighs> Here's my thing. When you, they always say this, when you get married, you become one. Okay? You are now one. Here's my thing. If I was Brittany, she said she works two jobs. She worked hard to make everything hers as she should have Brittany better not pay a dime of restitution fees for Ray Ray told us in the previous episode you know restitution fees can you know it depends on what your crime was to how much you have to pay your restitution fees he told us that he broke in a pharmacy and he sold he took the drugs and he sold those drugs so that's why his you know, restitution is what it is. Brittany better not pay a dime in that restitution. Brittany didn't get into the car, rob the pharmacy, took those pharmacy meds and sold them. She did not do that. She did not spend so many years in jail for a crime that she did not do. So why should she have to pay that restitution fee? Ray, you decided one day to go with your friends, to rob a pharmacy, to take those drugs that is supposed to help other people, but you decided to take those drugs and to sell them. That is why you are paying that restitution fee. You decided to do that. You did. So you are going to pay that restitution fee for that money that's going to start coming out of your checks, okay? I'm not paying a dime. If I was Brittany, I'm not paying a dime. I didn't do the crime, so I'm not paying off your debt. Absolutely not, Brittany. You should not have to do that. Absolutely not, Brittany. If you start paying off that restitution fee, I'm going to be really mad at you, Brittany, because you should not have to spend your money paying for what he did. He needs to pay for that. He made it. He did it. He needs to pay for it. Okay? He needs to do that. Not you, Brittany. Forget all that. You become one. And no, uh, uh-uh. uh, he does that, Brittany. So then she brings up how, um, her mom hasn't met Ray yet. Look here, I was on Miss Demetria's side this whole time. Miss Demetria went 
on full blown mama bear protects her cub mode. She look here, even though that's she says, you know, Ray is her stepson. No, that's my son. That is my son. And I love Miss Demetria in this scene. She literally told Brittany's mama that she needs to give Ray a chance. Don't look at, oh, you know, my son isn't perfect. He made a mistake. Yes, he did. But you want your daughter to be with, you know, a lawyer or a doctor, an athlete. Look here. They can be good. They can be good in front of everybody else, but behind closed doors, they could be a rude and mean individual. And what makes you think that they aren't better than Ray? And yes, just because they met in on a prison website and everything like that, that, that does not mean that he's not too good for Brittany. And Miss Dimitri was just clocking Brittany's mom left and right, left and right, up and down, everything, okay? Give her, give Ray a chance. He seems like a good guy. You know, we don't, he seems like, you know, the chill, laid back type of individuals. You know, he doesn't give off, you know, that extra personality, you know, that loud, you know, brash type of person. He really seems cool and laid back, but you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. But you can't be rude to someone and not give them a chance because of what they did. You know, people make mistakes, but it depends on how you grow from that. And it looks like Ray has definitely learned his lesson. He, you know, reevaluated his life. And it's like, you had to give him a chance. And for Brittany's mom to just like, don't want to meet him. I have no intentions of meeting him. You're not good for my daughter. Yada, yada, yada. You want your daughter to date an athlete or a doctor. But you may think one thing, but behind closed doors, they can be doing something really bad to your daughter. So... You know, that scene, I really like that scene because Miss Demetria was just not, she was, you ain't going to talk bad about my son. That's what Miss Demetria was saying. You ain't going to talk bad about my son. So that was Brittany and Ray. Let's talk about John. No, 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 no. Let's talk about Amber and Puppy. So Amber and Puppy, they are one of the cast members on the show. Amber and Puppy were from the earlier season of Life at the Lockup. Amber was in a so-called relationship with Vince. Um, that relationship wasn't anything, you know, whole like adoption of Puppy and, you know, them setting him up and everything like that. And it fell through, okay? So Amber was in jail for... Um, drugs with um possession to distribute and everything like that and so she was in jail for a really long time and now she's doing parole she's on parole for 20 years so she was doing some high you know drug activities okay so basically running like their own little business cartel and everything like that so Ever since Amber got out of prison, she's been doing great. Amber, she has a job now. She has a house with one of her roommates, with Queenie, Queen, who she met in jail. Both of them are doing 20 years of parole. So Amber definitely turned over a new leaf. Definitely turned over a new leaf. She's happy with her life. She's happy with being a normal, productive citizen, okay? So she was in a relationship in jail with this girl, Puppy, okay? And... They did some, you know, lesbianics activities up in jail, okay? So, when Puppy got out of jail, Puppy thought that she and Amber were going to be together, be in this relationship, live happily ever after, and everything like that. Amber never saw Puppy like that. She never did. She didn't want to go down that, you know, relationship road with Puppy. And Puppy was very devastated. And we saw her lashing out on last season of Life at the Lockup, her drinking and everything like that. So Amber hasn't heard from Puppy. She hasn't heard from Puppy in a minute. So she's worried. She goes to her mom's house, goes to Puppy's mom's house. Puppy's mom haven't heard from her. Puppy's mom is sick. I think she has kidney problems and she's on dialysis. That's what I think is her health issue. Um, but Puppy hasn't been taking her mom to appointments, hasn't been calling her, and her mom is worried. Same thing for Amber. And so Puppy's mom gives Amber an address, okay? 
And Amber was like, look here, I'm going to check out the address and I'll let you know if she's doing okay. So we go to see Amber's house. You know, cute little house. Queen is her roommate. And so both her and Queen, like I said, they were in jail and they're friends. She's friends with Puppy as well. So Amber tells Queen, like, hey, I got this address from Puppy's mom. Let's go check her out. Um, Queenie was like, no, absolutely not. Because what if, you know, it's a drug house and we go back to jail? Puppy's violating her parole. What if we go somewhere where we should not be at, filled with drugs, anything, you know, illegal, we can go right back to jail. Pup, Queen's like, I'm not falling for this. Uh-uh, no, 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 I don't want to do this. So they Google the address. And they're like, you know what, the neighborhood looks nice, you know, no boarded up houses, no broken street lights, no nothing. It looks good. So they go to the place. And, you know, it's like a quite little, you know, little neighborhood and everything like that house looks nice and you know but the curtains are closed but you don't know doctors and lawyers they'd be coming over here to buy drugs because you know suburban neighborhoods be having drug dealers there too okay so they like okay let's look for any movement so they stalk they doing a little steak out of the house queenie was like you know i heard you and you went on a date with sammy last night sammy is amber's ex-boyfriend and she was talking to him when she was out in the free world with me. She kept talking to him. He reached back to her, her ex-boyfriend. They've had their ups and downs and everything like that. But Sam Amber looks like she is slowly letting Sammy back into her life. But it's going to take some time. Queenie, on the other hand, does not trust Sammy. She don't trust him. And she's going to keep an eye out on Sammy, okay? So Amber was like, you know what? Let me go knock on the door. So she goes and she knocks on the door. That's the end of Amber and Puppy, okay? So let's talk about John and Christiana. <sighs> John and Christiana were on the last... Hmm, what do I want to say? They were on Love at the Lockup a couple of seasons ago. All right, John met... Christiana on a website and um, he's an enabler he's an enabler and she was in jail for drug possession and you know she was doing good but she had to go to a halfway house um she got caught in halfway house and she left she left the halfway house she ended up going back to jail during that time in jail she asked John to see if her mom and her sister can stay with them okay because her sister is an ex-felon and she's in an abusive relationship so she wants her sister her mom to live with john so during that time of her sister tara and her mom being in a house tara and john were flirting they were flirting very heavily you know kind of heavy but it never led to anything it never led to anything but Christiana's mom think that something happened he tells her on the last season of life after lockup that him and Chris him and Tara were flirting and Christiana was very upset about it as she should be she was upset with John and she was upset with her sister okay so this season they're still talking about it Christiana is you can still see she is very upset about the situation she does not trust John one bit you know and he can tell his daughter shows up and he tells her that you know yes we were flirting but I wasn't cheating on her and I hate that so much I hate that question that people pose is flirting cheating in my opinion it is cheating you're flirting with a woman, a woman, hey, you're a woman, you're in a relationship, you're flirting with a man or another woman, you're a man, you flirt with a man or another woman, it does not matter. You're flirting with someone who is not your wife or your husband or your boyfriend or your girlfriend. You're flirting with someone else. You're saying sexual things, you may be doing sexual things and whatever, Flirting is cheating, in my opinion. That is 100% cheating. And John was like, 
flirting. I didn't touch her. I didn't cheat on her. You were flirting. You were flirting with someone who is not your wife. That is cheating, John. And he's trying to make up an excuse for it. And his daughter, his daughter was really telling the truth. Like, look here, if you love Christiana, you would have been flirting with Tara. You know, don't mess this up. Because John told us in his season of love at the lockup that every woman he's been with, he's cheated on them with. So why are you in a, trying to be in a relationship when all you do is cheat? Why? You shouldn't even be in a relationship. You should just be single doing your own thing because you can't hold a relationship because all you do is cheat. Okay. So he has this fascination with Bonnie and Clyde. I say y'all are nowhere near Bonnie and Clyde. Y'all are like the watered down great value version of Bonnie and Clyde because that is not what y'all are. Okay. He is trying to make fetch happen with them and he makes it up to her by taking her on this photo shoot and this photo shoot is a paying homage to Bonnie and Clyde. And I said, no, mm-mm, mm-mm, no, nowhere near Bonnie and Clyde. Um, so they do this photo shoot and he proposes, he re-proposes to Christiana because when Christiana got out of jail the first time, they got married, literally right after she just got out of jail, they got married in the back of his truck in a Native American ceremony. She literally said in her confessional, you know, at first I really think like, did I rush into this wedding? Absolutely, you rushed into getting married with this man. You barely knew this guy. All you were doing was talking on the phone and everything like that. Yeah, a couple of visits here and there, but you didn't really know the guy. And you got married to him right off the bat in the back of his pickup truck. Yes, Christiana, you rushed into this marriage. And she's not sure if she wants to you know, be with John at this point. So that's the thing that happened with Christiana and John. Let's get into Sean and Sarah. <sighs> I really want to know what is, what is the levels of stupidity? Because you have, you have stupid, you have dumb, what is past dumb? Please, somebody break down a stupidity level because Sean is past dumb, okay? Sean is in Ohio, okay? He's in Ohio. He is about to pick up Sarah. Sarah is one of the girls that he was talking to along with Destiny. He was talking to two girls, Sarah and Destiny. He broke things off with Sarah to go be with Destiny. He realized Destiny was not good for him, so he turned around and right went right back to Sarah. He's waiting outside for Sarah. He's, you know, getting everything ready to go pick her up. He has a smoothie and he pours some vodka in it, you know, to calm her nerves. And, you know, he he's telling her that he loves her and that he got feelings for her. And when he was with Destiny, he ignored all the red flags. And I'm like, because you were just stupid and you were blinded by love, idiot. Um, He is just trying to make it up in his head that Sarah is the one. Sarah is it, y'all. So he he says, look here, Sarah and I, we just want to have sex. We don't care if we get a motel, if we do it out in the cornfields, we can do it wherever. We can even do it in the car. I said, y'all are some adventurous people trying to do it out in public. Oh my gosh, absolutely not. In the cornfield, I mean, hey, nobody ain't gonna see you, so go right ahead. Okay, so we see Sean. He pulls up. He's out in front of prison. He's like, you know what? I've I done this before. You would think I would be used to it, you know, but I'm nervous. I said, yep, you sure are nervous, Sean. So he sees a car. He said he hasn't seen Sarah in five years. He only seen her mugshot. So you didn't send letters or anything like that? You didn't send a picture of yourself. She didn't send the picture, you know, with the, you know, the little, you know, prison photo background. She ain't sending you a picture, nothing. You only seen her mugshot. Okay, Sean. Okay, we'll believe you. We'll believe you. So there's a car. A car pulls up. He was like, is this Sarah? Oh, is this Sarah? I, I don't know. I haven't seen her. Oh, 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 is this Sarah? Oh, my God. It's Sarah. 
Sarah, she, she's, you know, she's a decent girl. Sarah looks, she looks decent. You know, she's not ugly. She looks decent, okay? So, Sarah tells us about how um, she, you know, met Sean. She would have, have thought, you know, talking on the phone could turn into something so serious and how she is in love with Sean. She's head over heels. Every other guy that she's dated was young, tatted up doing drugs you know just young idiots but Sean he doesn't have no tattoos he's mature he's this he's that you know she is just head over heels in love with Sean here's the kicker here's the kicker y'all so for how many seasons love after lockup has been on tv we've had people on the show you know former felons you know They've came on a show, either, you know, the crimes that they did were robbery, um, burglary, um, you had drugs with possession to distribute, um, you've had uh, malicious wounding, you've had that. Sarah tells us she just did six years, okay? She just did six years years pause y'all one second pause okay i had to get my charger okay so sarah tells us that she did six years she just did six years y'all for involuntary manslaughter involuntary manslaughter like i said there have been robberies there have been burglaries there has been possession with intent drugs with intention to distribute we malicious wounded we've had that we've never had involuntary manslaughter on love after lockup she tells us she sold someone heroin she then proceeded to inject that person with heroin, that person ended up overdosing and he didn't make it. <sighs> Involuntary manslaughter. She says that, you know what? I didn't mean to do that. I am very sorry with what I did. And she seemed, she really seemed sorry with what she did. She really did. She said, for now on, I just want to be you know, a positive citizen, a productive citizen in the community. I just want to turn my life around. It's like, I do regret what I did. And I was like, involuntary manslaughter. My God, girl. My God. That's some heavy stuff, involuntary manslaughter. So Sean picks her up and he says, she's so beautiful. You know, I want this relationship to last, you know, because I, I missed the red flags with Destiny. I said, yes, you did. Yes, you did, because you're an idiot. You're an idiot, Sean. You're an idiot. And you're an idiot right now because you quit your job as a mechanic when you were making good money and you moved to Ohio. You're stupid, Sean, for a girl. You're dumb, Sean. You're dumb. So they were driving and her anxiety is kicking in as it should be. You haven't, you haven't been outside for six years. Okay. Your anxiety, your anxiety is going to kick in. Sean gives her a bag, but then she, he also gives her a phone. <sighs> oh, Sean, you're dumb. Oh, you're dumb, Sean. You're past dumb. You are just so past dumb, man. So she calls her mom. He was like, put it on speaker. She's like, no, I don't want to put it on speaker. So she calls her mom. And she's saying, she's talking, you know, on the phone, whatever. You can't hear the voice on the phone. Can't hear the voice on the phone. So we don't know if she's talking to her mom or somebody else. Sarah proceeds to say, you know what? I have, I wasn't always truthful with Sean, you know, but I do need to come clean eventually. And I'm like, Sarah, Sarah, you got another man? On the line, you ain't talking to your mama. You was talking to another man. Sarah, stop playing in our faces, girl. We know. We know. You talking to another dude. We know. But we ain't going to find out until next episode. <sighs> Sean just continues to 
when I think he can't do anything stupid, he does it. He he does something even more stupid. And I just look at him like, my God, <sighs> you can't be, you cannot, you cannot be this dumb. You can't. It's not possible, Sean. But Sean, he, he, he does it every, every, every week. Because this dude is just out of it. He's really out of it. He is looking for anything and anything to find love. Okay. But y'all, that was life at the lockup. <laughs> oh my gosh. These people, like, these people, these people, these people, these people. So y'all, I'll see y'all tomorrow for Animal Kingdom. Peace and love. I love you guys.